Tasha Dulek, welcome to Tibet Museum's bi-monthly talk series. Tibet Museum conducts <coughs> Tibet Awareness talk series twice a month to raise awareness on Tibet and its current situation. Today we have Dr. Tenzin Tsultrum, who is a research fellow. After, so this is an introduction of him. So after completing his Bachelor of Education in 2009, Dr. Sultrim pursued his MPhil degree in Historical Studies from the Department of History from the University of Madras with a dissertation on India-China relationships from 1914 to 1962. He then enrolled in a PhD program from the same university and in 2015 submitted his PhD thesis on India-China relations from 1963 to 2010, which is concentration. Dr. Tenzin Sultrim is currently, currently a visiting fellow at the Tibet Policy Institute researching on international situations in China and its implications. And I would request uh, Dr. Tenzin Sultrim to come and give his presentation. Good afternoon. I think uh, Sedula, or I think Sedula for a kind introduction. I think, but she said, while pursuing MPhil, I was, uh, I mean, she mentioned it as a doctor. At that time, I, I was still a student, you know. But it's actually, I'm still now as a student, just to, you know, clear the... <laughs> okay, uh, my, today my presentation is about uh, Chinese military exercises on the Tibetan plateau and assessment. Actually, I don't have uh, any military background. As a researcher, you know, I, I have done this little bit of research. So I'll be you know, speaking on this topic. Now before that, I, I would like to talk about what is militarization. Uh, normally, militarization refers to the process of using military security forces and political police to suppress the people's just demand for human society, which means a kind of uh, you know uh, militarization that is taking place in Tibet. Now, first thing you know, people liberation army. You know, what first thing what they did is as soon as after the uh, invasion of Tibet, this you know, first thing what they did was they started you know. Uh, construct it started building roads you know I mean they this there was uh, this and this kind of strategic development you know which in terms of uh, construction of roads railway and bridges and this kind of strategic development continuing for many decades and they which is still continuing in Tibet uh, so I consider all this uh, uh, the development which they call infrastructure development but I feel this is kind of a strategic development that is taking place in Tibet and this is also you know, could be a you know one process of militarization, and because and all this infrastructure development, I, uh, which I'm saying strategic development, later helped the Chinese to move their soldiers and army, uh, as well as armament, in a you know in a, from one place to another place in a very short span of short span of time. So this is very you know process of militarization, all this you know uh, infrastructure development. Uh, first, I would like to. Uh, say say a few things about the geostrategic importance of Tibet. You now Tibet, as you know, is one of the highest plateau of the world. It's also called as a uh, roof of the world. And uh, Tibet, is, if you see, you might have seen the, the map in I think in the in down the I mean the corridor. Uh, that Tibet is located at the heart of Asia, and it is you know Tibet is dividing. It's kind of a natural buffer state. You know, standing between uh, you know many uh, like during. 19th century, it was act, it acted as a barrier between Russia and Tsarist uh, uh, Russia and uh, British India. And as and in 19th century, I think you might heard of uh, the, uh, a, a game called the Great Game, uh, which was it was question of uh, you know like having uh, their influence. The, I mean the great great power Tsarist uh, Russia and India having the influence in Tibet. And this Great Game continued for many years. And, and this was done mainly because you know Tibet being a strategic located you know between them, so it act as a kind of buffer state. And uh, and, and for and in that century, you know, this all this all this you know the kind of political development in, uh, happening in Tibet, both this country you know Russia, Zanis, Russia and uh, British India, they wanted to have influence in Tibet, and this continued for long times. And in 20th century, another new great game started, and you might know that is between India and China. And uh, the f the first war that fought between India and China was over the question of Tibet. You know, uh, you know who uh, they both of them wanted to have the influence in Tibet. So I think this uh, I think the the first war ever fought between India and China it was over the question of Tibet. So it shows that you know the kind of uh, strategic value Tibet has uh, between the Asian countries. And also, uh, I think many important rivers both in. Uh, 
uh, India as well as China originate from Tibet. For example, river Indus, Satluj, Ganga, all these important river, major rivers, I, I should call it, uh, they have its origin originate from Tibet. And also, there are a few rivers in uh, China, like Yellow River, Yangtze, all these uh, important rivers also originate from Tibet. And these both these I mean, both all these rivers not only serve to uh, these two countries, Asian country, but also to the downstream country like Asian, uh, Philippines, Vietnam. So Tibet play a very important role. You know, whoever control the Tibet, you know, they have an uh, upper hand in deciding the future politics of not only Asia but as of the world as well. So Tibet is, uh, you know, it looks more about it. It looks, you know, that the, the question of Tibet looks more like political, but it's very strategic as well as you know quite, you know, what do you call it? having a different value as well, not only political value. Uh, so I will tell a little bit about uh, military exercises. Uh, uh, actually, military exercises uh, is uh, similar to wartime operation. Uh, I'm talking about normal military exercises, uh, involving planning, preparation, and execution. Uh, and the main reason for carrying out, you know, the, uh, of military exercises is for the purpose of training and evaluations. And it could be a multinational, which means uh, many countries, like uh, more than two, three countries, like USA, Russia, India, they could participate. That is called multinational. Or joint, uh, joint military exercises, which means it could be between two countries. Or single service exercises, I mean, any single service. So it all depend on their participating organization. Uh, based on this, uh, the military exercises take place. And Tibet, as I said before, it is a, it has a strategic value as well as a, uh, the major source of river and also I, I forget to mention the major source of mineral, mineral as well like uh, uranium, chromite, boron, all these important uh, you know, met, uh, minerals are um, found abundance in Tibet. So also that and, and so Tibet being a you know, geographically hostile terrain, you know, Tibet is full of mountains and also having a, you know, quite a, what do you call it, it's a wide area which is difficult for the soldiers to you know roam around or to practice so because of that reason Chinese army need a frequent military exercises you know to adapt to Tibet hostile environment and also to get a Tibet being as I said it's a, one of the highest you know plateau of the world so it's for soldiers Chinese soldiers they need frequent military exercises to get acclimatized so that's the main reason why the Chinese soldiers are engaged in a frequent military, uh, military exercise on the Tibetan plateau. I think uh, the first military exercise that is the live fire which what live fire which means uh, the life you know they used to um, they use the uh, weapons li life weapons during these exercises it took place on uh, 2010 from 10 october to 3rd october i mean this is i think this is this was the first live fire military exercise conducted by the chinese military army and uh, in that in that uh, they it, i mean it involved you know they have employed air forces artillery Electronic Warfare Division on the Tibetan Plateau, and these exercises aim, you know, the main. As I said before, these exercises were aim. What main intention was to test the endurance of the soldiers, you know, at altitude of around 4,700 meters, and it was also trans-regional joint exercises, which means you know, uh, PLA soldier from a different theater command like Beijing, Tendu, Lanto Military Command, all of this, uh, you know, command. A soldier from all these command they came together. Uh, it's like a joint regional exercise, and it involved around thirty thousand soldiers. So it's uh, you know the, the purpose of this military exercise. It seems uh, to you know uh, to soldiers from other you know, command they also will participate in this uh, in a Tibetan area so that they become familiar with the geographical trail and also get acclimatized and also you know for future you know they don't have to. Like if they practice all this together in the future, it might be easier for them to coordinate. So the purpose of this joint exercise was to get uh, to to familiarize or to make them aware of the geographic terrain of the Tibetan area. So you know this was the main intention of this first live fire military exercises. And the Tibet China Online, this is one of the official uh, website of uh, Tibet. I mean Tibet uh, Tibet Autonomous Region, which is uh, both in I think Tibetan as well as English. Uh, according to them, they said that exercises will have a significant role in testing the training patterns in mountainous area as well as coal area. And the main intention, according to them, was to improve the combat capability of soldier. So, in order, in order to have a, you know, better, uh, what do you call, uh, 
coordination in a you know, kind of hostile terrain. That is that was the main intention. I mean, I mean behind the conduct of these military exercises. So uh, as you might know, in 2016, China has upgraded its military theater command. I think earlier there was around seven military theater command uh, theater region. They called a region. Now they have merged the five, seven military region into a five military theater command. So while reforming that, uh, I mean the whole military reform, I mean the whole theater area, they have also upgraded the Tibetan military command. So Tibet, as compared to other provincial level, the Tibet military command was raised, which means that Tibet, uh, the you know the authority, the military authority in Tibet has a better command and over the military resources in Tibet. So the more powerful or the, the more authority the particular region has, so the more you know influence and the more they have a power on the military apparatus. So it means they have more soldiers and more equipment. Uh, so that that was the uh, main intention behind the upgradation of a military terror command as well as the I mean upgradation of Tibet military area. So soon after, as I said before, soon after the upgrading Tibet military command, there was a num number of military exercises on the Tibetan plateau. So, so you know, they, the main reason, and I mean, the more authority they have, so they, they are in position to conduct military, so, I mean, military apparatus. So with that, you know, there was many military exercises on the Tibetan plateau. On 29 October 2016, uh, <coughs> Chinese high mobility will Assault vehicle, they, uh, they call it a Dongfeng EQ2025. This kind of uh, assault vehicle, uh, which were normally used through the mountainous area in Tibet. And this vehicle, you know, this is mainly used for long range patrol deployment. You know, it's quite uh, what you call mobile, mo I mean, it's mobile in nature, which is quite having high mobility. So yeah, it is mainly, you know, used for, for kind of uh, patrolling the border areas. Actually, there is picture, you know, I, but due to as, as because most, uh, I, I think most of the you know staff, those who are those who know technical know how this, they left for other place. So I mean, because of that, uh, we, they are not able to connect to the project. And on April 19, 2016, I mean that is after a few mo months, another the, the, another military exercise were conducted. In that during that time, they have employed the wheel tank destroyer. And this is also kind of a, uh, what do you call, uh, it's tank, but it's more like a, what do you call, hybrid tank, you know, uh, having a tank, having a, what do you call, wheels, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about the, the iron wheels, but the other wheels, so it's kind of hybrid. So in that, uh, that tank is equipped with a PTL 0200mm also guns, and uh, they also conducted this, I mean, uh, what do you call, the military exercises, a PL artillery regiment, Station in Tar conducted manual training in mountainous region, and the main reason behind this exercise is uh, same as before to hone the rapid deployment capability in mountainous regions. So, you know, they, the main purpose behind all this is actually, as of now, we all know, I um, mean, in, in Tibetan area, there is no use of this kind of uh, heavy weapons, you know. So, the main reason most of them they have conducted uh, because Tibet being a uh, bordering area of India. So the main intention is to to make the soldier aware of the you know all the hostile geographic terrain you know between the India and China. I mean uh, that is I mean to Tibet being Tibet also. So that that is the main intention behind the um, frigate military exercises. Mm. And also they have you know uh, I think during the military exercise or during confrontation or during uh, conflict uh, the logistic you know the issue is very important. You know the more if you don't have a better logistic system during the uh, what you call concentration, uh, it could hinder the military process. All this, you know, because they are saying that uh, you know, in kind of a problem, you know, in war, speed is very important. You know, and it's for speed, you need a logistical supply. So, uh, in 7 April 2016, you know, the engineer brigade from uh, Tibet Autonomous Region they conducted field training exercise in Tibet. So in that brigade, I mean, they have employed uh, mainly what you call that bulldozer and uh, what you call hydraulic power, all this you know heavy armament, which supports the army supply. You know, they have um, uh, they have um, uh, conducted you know exercise on that uh, what you call I mean vehicles because uh, you know, at the time of uh, the conflict, you you need the 
you know, resource all these resources for the continued supply and also to make roads and also during war time it could be anything. So all these machine, I mean, uh, um, uh, armament and machine, all could be useful. And for that reason, uh, they have conducted frequent not only on armament also on uh, like bulldozers. I said before, and high three power. And this uh, the logistic, as I said before, the training. Unlike before, which were they conducted for more than four months, which was n normally conducted in the hinterland of Qinghai, Tibet Plateau, to hone troops, combat support capability in complicated and severe environments. And most of the, I think, uh, pictures, the military acts conducted by the China, they have posted in their well, website, in the official website, China Military Online or China Tibet Online. But normally they they never mention the area. They just mention it's mountainous area of Tibet, Tibetan Plateau, or near to something like as I said before, Jinghan Tibet Plateau, and also sometimes they are, uh, they are, I think it's it might be intentional, but sometimes they used to mention the date, but uh, you know, but there is no any specific uh, what you call connection between the date as well as the, you know posting sometime. So all this they sometimes you know in order to intimidate the Indian neighbor, uh, there is a reason behind this uh, for posting this kind of a, a picture but, but most of the time uh, the place they never mention it, they mention just like Tibetan play too and I think as I said before I, I, I haven't uh, you know put much thing as I, as I don't have any you know kind of military academic background but uh, but I, I expect if, if I get questions from you know audience but before that I would like to say you know the the significant behind the you know Frequent military exercises. Uh, the more you know military exercises take place, it shows the indicate the direction of training practice by troops. You know, from the military exercises, we can find out the kind of training you know uh, pattern you know uh, adopted by the soldiers, and also it indicate the military capabilities of a country, and it shows that uh, from the military exercise we can find out you know what kind of a soldier, uh, what kind, how many army, um, how many you know that soldiers are involved. I mean, and the weapons. It's, I mean, it's difficult to find directly, but uh, we can a little bit. We can find from the you know military access itself. In it also, I think uh, the more military access, it also signifies the Chinese military grow, growing you know seriousness in the preparedness of future war. You know, the more exercise they conduct, it shows they are serious about the future conflict. I mean, uh, they, whether they but their main aim is to win. But it shows they are uh, they are getting ready for the future conflict. You know, the more you know military access conduct, it shows they are getting ready for the future conflict. And also, as I said before, the more it, most of the time in military uh, exercises, you know, it gives enough scope for the soldiers to test and get familiar with the new weapons. You know, in the during the military exercises, they can uh, you know employ new weapons and they can familiar with the new weapon in, in, in advance because in, at the time of conflict, you don't have the time to practice. So that time you have to be in a uh, what you call real combat. So before that, the more military access they conduct, you know, it's easier for you know, them to know the weapon and also to have, I mean, to what you call to familiarize themselves with the new weapons introduced by in the uh, in the military. And also uh, the freaking military exercises on a particular region. For example, as I said before, soon after the upgradation of Tibet military command, there were numerous military exercises on the Tibetan plateau. So the more Exercise. If you take, I mean, if you take place, uh, participate in more military exercises in a particular area, uh, it will lead to the over familiarization of the particular place. So you will come to know about the geographical terrain and also all the area environment. You will come to know. So it will easier. It will facilitate, uh, you know, in future military combat. And also, um, you know, the more, you, I think you might know because in order to have. Uh, Normally interaction, you know, wherever we are, first we used to play games, you know, to get into uh, to each other. Because if we know each other, it's easier for us to work together. I mean, if we are like totally stranger to each other, it's difficult to what you call to have a fruitful discussion or difficult to have to work together as a team. So you know, uh, as I my what you call, I think the the. The frequent military access, if they take, there will be a better coordination you know, among the soldiers of different units. So it will be easier for them to coordinate in future, and also it will help them to have. They will be no any technical gap or kind of a, you know gap between them because the more 
exercises if they take place within themselves i mean among themselves they will be better coordination and it will help them for in future you know i mean future conflict they will not face any problem yeah with this uh, i would like to thank you i mean everyone for your you know kind attentions thank you Are they testing nuclear weapons on the Tibetan Well, that, I think uh, that case was, uh, what do you call it? It was, I think back in 1964, there was a joint expedition between USA and India to find out whether China has been conducting any nuclear expedition, I mean, uh, what do you call it, testing in Tibet or not. I heard there the, is area called Loknor. Where yeah, it has, uh, there was a not, I think ICT, you, you know, International Campaign for Tibet. They have uh, done a research in 1998, I think. I mean, that the, talk, the title of the book is Nuclear Tibet. I think that that is the first, what I, I should say, exhaustive uh, research. It's not a, a complete one. From that, I found out, you know, there was a trace of uh, what you call any after effect of nuclear testing. But, I mean, but it's difficult to find out, you know, it's, I mean, what they are doing because nuclear is, uh, they China, they they are good in keep, keeping secret. But we we can guess, I mean, from the, from the kind of uh, what you call environment. I heard in you know, the, 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 the particular region, I said Lobna, they they have been testing nuclear weapons. You know, is there? support in mainland China amongst the population for these kinds of policies? Or do you know the mainland view in uh, China towards...? Uh, I heard, but I'm, I can't say with certainty, but I heard uh, you, uh, there are now Chinese people, you know, the, those those people who are now getting aware mm -hmm. the real story. Mm -hmm. the Chinese, there are many Chinese you know, like, like people who are in China, you know, they are given a wrong story by the China. So they... Once they get the wrong story, they believe that you know Tibet is uh, you know like something which they um, which the CCP described. Mm -hmm. But now, as they come out of their you know that area, China, they will, now as you know, China, Chinese are everywhere in every country. So I think I heard Chinese intellectual, not only Chinese intellectual, Chinese people, ordinary people, now they are coming to know. I mean, they are learning other coming to know the true story. Mm -hmm. Through that, I think uh, now they are you know. But I'm I'm not saying that whole Chinese population, but now many Chinese now are realizing the true story. I mean, they, they can, you, I mean, you cannot stick to one story. Once you come out, you are in position to know this, I mean, to know what is actually happening in Tibet. Yeah. So they, they get a different kind of version. I mean, the true, um, the story, uh, the, the real Tibetan story. Mm -hmm. I, now I think it's increasing, but I can't say, say that exactly, you know, number. Okay. What is India's reaction to Chinese military aggression in Tibet? Oh, I think China, India's reaction, I should say, but I, uh, you mean to say current or you know, current? Just, yeah. uh, I think India reaction, as I said before, the uh, Ch Chinese has been introducing a lot of infrastructure development in Tibet, mm. like construction railway, all this they have done in 1984-2006 and still doing on as uh, regarding the, what do you call it? Now, just, I just say uh, the little incident, for example, I think you might, the current incident in uh, Doklam area, and that uh, I think from my reading I heard uh, first the China India Indian uh, soldiers uh, they have uh, what you call upgrading its bunker you know the where the soldiers hide and later the Chinese discovered this uh, development so they started you know uh, started constructing road you know bringing bulldozers and construction so Indian soldier you know they just confronted them and stopped them from construction so it's uh, it's what do you call it shows uh, what, I mean. Uh, India is not taking any steps step further, but India is kind of reacting, you know, to whatever policy introduced by China. So, uh, the same thing happened in 2010, I think September, uh, when uh, Chinese soldier, you know, uh, was 
you know, they, I mean, they, they said before the Indian, uh, what do you call, soldier or Indian government, uh, they, they are mainly in a, they are reacting whatever policy uh, implemented by China and as also now at present I think India is engaged in upgrading infrastructure not only railway road as well but they they are a little bit slow in that process I think now currently they are they, they, they are they are the process I think they I heard they started constructing they they they, they are planning to construct a railway from Manali to Lada I think which is in process. So these all are, uh, you know, development initiated by India in order to, you know, I mean, uh, so that they will be in better position if China something happened between them. So I should say India, early in India was uh, reacting, now it's taking a little bit, you know, what you call constructive steps in order to counter China. Is there maybe another country that is doing the military exercises together with China as an ally? Or okay. is it purely you know, in China? I mean, in uh, Tibet, yeah. I think uh, yeah, I think your question is uh, quite good. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I think I, what from my reading, I heard China mainly interested in joint. I heard they are interested in joint uh, military exercises. They are not interested in multi, you know, uh, what you call lateral, which involve many countries. Mm -hmm. and I think as of now, you might. I think it's quite clear they haven't conducted any military ex joint military or whether it could be multi uh, lateral military exercise on Tibetan plate too. Mm -hmm. So. Because this is the area which China is kind of backyard, so they don't want anybody in, to come together and know all this area well. Right. I think th that might be the you know good reason for China not to bring any you know other countries mm -hmm. in the dependent area. Right. I think that, that might be the good reason. Or else I think in India and what you call China could conduct joint military exercises here, but they but but then China will not be ready because if once India come to know about the children, then it will you know. What do you call it? I mean, they, they, it's kind of uh, bringing the soldier in your house, you know. So it's right. not good for China. I think for that reason, uh, I think China is interested in military exercises. But as of now, I, I think they, they, they haven't been in joint military exercises <laughs> on the Tibetan plate. Mm -hmm. Didn't know. Because they had some in the, you know, in the ocean areas. And so yeah, yeah. That, that is that quite open area. Yeah, okay. that they are interested. But not inside. Yeah, because they want to know other countries' uh, military preparedness. Mm -hmm. But on the Tibetan area, I think till now. I think they haven't conducted any joint military exercise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, in China and in Tibet, are they aware about these military exercises are happening, or is this information uh, from the public? Yeah, yeah actually, uh, uh, these uh, what, uh, exercises are mainly from uh, I, I got from the Chinese official website, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean from there I found out. I think they might be because you know, uh, you know, because all these what you call transportation, all these logistics, they have to go through the you know, through what you call the, the where the people, normal general people, I mean, used to go, mm -hmm. like road, all this road, all these are for civilian uses. I think uh, you know, people might know it is quite uh, easier. Very visible. Yeah, it's visible, mm -hmm. and also, but there are all these extra conducted in I think in what you call in a mountainous area where there are no you know, like no any settlement there. And is it in the media? Yes, I think uh, when uh, I think whenever there is a problem between India and China, like confrontation which is happening now, as of now like it's, I think it's been going, undergoing like one month, more than one month. At that time, it will they will bring out. Mm -hmm. But when there is no any confrontation, the Indian media they will not touch anything. I mean, if there is access going on, they will just they will not highlight it. Mm -hmm. um, but if there is confrontation, then uh, media you know, they need a reason and they will give a different imp uh, what you call interpretation like because of their confrontation now they are uh, having practice I mean there is practice but but at the time of confrontation they it will get more it, they will highlight they will get more you know what you call media coverage mm -hmm. does the United States have a stance on this uh, I mean on the on, on the military exercises which are I, but in Tibetan plate still now they haven't I'm not sure they, yeah, in yeah. My, my opinion they haven't but if China uh, engage in military access with other country like Korea or something like that, then I mean uh, that. For example, if China, uh, USA and Taiwan are engaged in military exercises, then China will not be happy. Yeah. Like that, if China engage in military access with Russia or something, uh, someone else, which is a uh, have not good relation with USA, then USA might has uh, some kind of uh, what you call reservation about the practice. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So it depends on the, you know, the country's the relations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And thank you all for your questions and also for your, you know, observation and your, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we would like to present uh, Dr. Putin Sultan with the kata. Thank you for his time. Thank you.